Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. It is time for our next Saturday with Stacy, YouTube class number 403. This is a great class. <laughs> I'm just going to say that to begin with. I am so excited. I have got, well, you know my favorite words in business, um, exclusively at Worldwide Launch available only at <laughs> first to market well i've got a lot of that in this class and then and then the pricing was even more amazing really i i am honestly this excited <laughs> i've got product from ozzy andrew and couture creations that he sent me and the next thing he knew, I was on the phone with him and we were texting at one o'clock in the morning because it's one o'clock my time. Hey, Sarah, over in Australia, I was up at 1 a.m. texting Australia. She's usually up in the morning <laughs> live chatting with us. And it's like one o'clock in the morning in Australia when she's live chatting with me. So I stayed up to talk to Ozzy Andrew. I've got beautiful product from him. I have got Sizzix, I've got Simply Defined, so a worldwide launch on the Couture Creations product, uh, only at exclusively on the Simply Defined product and the Simply Botanical product, and a technique that has been revisited and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stacify it a little bit we're gonna take something that we've done before and we're just gonna go bam and 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 just throw everything at it and wait till you see how it comes out oh this is not hard if you are a beginning crafter stay tuned what you see me do here you will also be able to do even if you're not an experienced crafter. And if you are experienced and have been crafting like me since dirt, you're gonna pull out some of that Sizzix opulent paper and start playing with it all over again. And if you don't have Sizzix opulent paper, well, why not? <laughs> it's beautiful. And wait till you see how we reinvent it. So I've got winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about. Then I'm gonna tilt down to the Simply Botanical and show you that. And then I'm probably gonna come back up and talk just a little bit more about the worldwide launch. Quick update on the warehouse sale. If you are on the first day of the warehouse sale, which was last year, we have about 100 orders left to pull and then we're done with the first day. So we're pulling them and then they go to quality control and then they go to shipping. You'll know you're getting close to shipping when your status changes from awaiting or from awaiting fulfillment to awaiting shipping. And then within a short time frame, it goes from awaiting shipping to shipped. Maybe a, a day or two sometimes, maybe three, it just depends how many, how big the orders are and how long it takes to pack it. But we've got only about 100 orders left on the first day. That means if you placed your order on the second day of the warehouse sale, well, we've sent all the PayPal payments out. Please check your spam. Please check your inbox for an invoice from PayPal from Scrapbooking Made Simple. You don't have to have a PayPal account to pay it. There's a link down at the bottom. You can use your credit card or you can call us between the hours of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. sunny California time. Remember, if in, you're in New York at 6 p.m. our time, it's 9 p.m. your time. So there's going to be a time difference for some of you. Just remember, we don't open until 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, gosh, that was that. What else do I have to do for updates? Um, I think that's it. Let's do winner, winner, chicken dinner so I can get that out of the way. And again, if you didn't place an order during the warehouse sale last year, then this doesn't apply to you. That information doesn't apply to you at all. This was only for the warehouse sale. And are we gonna have another warehouse sale? Yes, yes we are. I'm not exactly sure when it's gonna be this year, but 
but we're definitely going to have another one. The manufacturers are all Wahoo Kachu. I've already got their lists of product and all sorts of stuff. So hang tight. And the store reopening. We're doing our best to get it open, but it is like reopening a store from the beginning. Like I just walked in and took the space from the very first day. All of our furniture hasn't been delivered yet. And our, our, our handyman guy has to come back and build it once it is. And we're starting to put product out in the store again, but it is a task and we can't focus. We, we only have so much time each day that we can work on it because then we have other things that have to get done. So, and we're a skeleton crew. So locals, please, I'm doing my best to get it open as quickly as possible. It will be another few weeks before we announce that we will be opening, but just as soon as I have a date, I will let you know and we will be so excited to see all of you. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. This is from YouTube number 402 and it was with the uh, LD, uh, yeah, LDRS, Little Darlings Rubber Stamps, the the stacked stamps and dies and we stenciled with those dies. Hello. <laughs> it was so much fun. And, and Angie was on the live chat with us, which was super fun. I don't know if I can get Ozzy Andrew. He'd have to get up awful early in the morning. Maybe, <laughs> maybe Sarah who live chats with us on Saturday mornings from Australia. There's a couple of them from, from, Australia that live chat. Maybe you guys can all get Ozzy Andrew up to live chat with us once. Okay, our first winner winner is these people have won a $25 gift card. It is already in their online account. And gosh, you can get 12 of what I'm going to show you with that $25. Uh, Jane, Jane Krisky, Jane Krisky, Krisky, Jane, is that you? Congratulations if it is, because you just got 25 bucks in your online account. Wahoo kachu! Our second winner winner is Joey, J-O-E-Y. Razano. Joey Razano. Hello, Joey Razano. Is that you? Because if it is, you also are a winner winner chicken dinner. And you can head over to your online account now and you will find $25 in there to spend any way that makes your heart happy. And I always encourage people to buy something they wouldn't normally buy. Really, buy something that, you, that you've always wanted but you just couldn't justify it. Now if you got $25 to spend on it, make your heart happy. It makes my heart happy to give it to you. So hopefully, hopefully you use it for something that is just fabulous. All right. Winner, winner, chicken dinner dance. You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, catch you for you. Congratulations to the both of you. If, if you want a chance to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, you do have to subscribe, hit that heart, hit that heart and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And then you can post a comment below. Live chat does not count. You have to post a comment below and then our software will randomly pick two winners every week and you just never know when you're gonna hear your name. Now, I'm gonna tilt down because I've got Simply Botanical to show you. Simply Botanical is exclusive, <laughs> only at and designed by. <laughs> so Simply Botanical is a one set a month. It's just one die and one stamp set, one set, Every month it is a co-brand with Spellbinders and we, I do the designing, they do the manufacturing, we partner together so we're supporting the manufacturers that support us and it's value priced at $14.39. So I'm going to tilt down and I'm going to show you those and then we're going to talk about alcohol ink. Hmm. Okay, down I go. Bye. No, no, don't, 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 Stacy. Okay, there we go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I almost thought I lost it. Okay, let me tilt on. Let me keep going down and let me tilt on in, 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 in. Oh, maybe I'm down too far. Up, up, up. In, in, in. Okay. Phew. Okay. So here is the, so here's the latest Simply Botanical. I'm going to turn this maybe that way so we can, we don't get the glare. Here's the Simply Botanical. So you've got the die 
and the stamp all in one package. It is a co-brand between scra uh, Scrapbooking Made Simple, Simply Botanical, and Spellbinders. $14.39. Seriously, great price. Okay, so let me show you some samples. When they are gone, they are gone. They are a one and done. Pretty, right? Honorary SMS girl Katie made this one. Well, she made a couple of these. How about this one? Beautiful. So for your $14.39, you get the dies, you get the stamps. And we do it again once a month. So this is the June. They release at the end of the month. So there's a bunch of samples for you. And here Katie used, so the oh, she, she's got this little teeny tiny caterpillar down here wishing that it was going to be a butterfly. And that butterfly is the butterfly from the set. <laughs> and then she put a little flower bubble around it because he's thinking like a thought bubble. Isn't that so cute? Okay, so that is Simply Botanical for June. And they are available now. So I hope you like them. Let me put those there. And then let me tilt up again. You know what? I'm going to just move this that way. I think that's a good idea. Okay, and I'm going to tilt on back so I can talk to you. All right, so quickly. <sighs> Scrapbooking Made Simple used to carry alcohol ink markers. Uh, we carry the, the Marabou permanent markers, which are an alcohol-based marker. They're very much like a Bic or a Sharpie marker. But we used to carry Copic brand, and we were a considered a chain store for Copic because we sold so many Copic markers. Now to be a chain store, that means I was competing with the likes of Michaels, a billion dollar corporation, or Blick, or um, lots of really big online companies. <laughs> and we're just our little, our little self here in the Taco Bell shopping center. So sketch markers at the time retailed for $6.99 and we were allowed to sell them the lowest price anybody could go was $5.24 so our everyday price was $5.24 and we carried all 364 colors of them and Copics are a beautiful product. Then Copic raised their price and there was some changes inside the company. The distributor changed, a whole bunch of things changed. They raised their price to $7.99 for one sketch marker, which meant we could sell it for, I think, $5.79. And it just got difficult. The price was going up, the availability was low, it was just getting difficult. So I made the decision to stop selling alcohol markers. I didn't want to just change brands because I really liked Copic <laughs> and I didn't want to bring in Spectrum Noir and you know to me it's all about the nib and about the the quality of the ink so Ozzy Andrew emails me and says a, co a little while ago he says I'm doing alcohol ink markers and I said blah 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 <laughs> or maybe yada 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 it was like i wanted nothing to do with them because i had copic and i know what they were like and it was just their beautiful markers and so he sent an email saying um i've got alcohol markers they're just landing i mean we're literally taking them out of the box and i said okay send me some so he basically overnighted them from australia <laughs> and i got them he didn't tell me the price. He didn't tell me anything about them because generally I don't want to know. I want to make a decision on my own. I don't want to be influenced by anything. I mean, there's influencers out there that hold up a can of Coke and they get paid a million dollars to do that. I want to make my own decision. Thank you very much. 
So he has 108 colors and he sent me all 108 colors. And I started to play with them and I'm like, hmm, hmm. And my first question was, well, where are the refills? And, and are there going to be more colors? And I had lots of questions, so I had to wait to talk to him because there's such a time difference. And so I got on the phone with him and I said, hmm, well, they're kind of nice, Andrew. And I could hear him going, ha, 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 told you so. Manufacturers just love to tell me, told you so. That's okay. I can live with it. You know what? I'm, I'm good with that. I, I, I would prefer to be wrong and they are right and their product is amazing. And so he said, he said, well, we may come out with some more colors. We'll, we'll slowly possibly look at it, but 108 is good to start. And I said, okay. And I said, what about refills? And he goes, well, I'm thinking about it, but I'm not 100% sure yet. And I said, well, the blender pin definitely needs a refill. And then he said, so you want to know the price? And I said, sure. I'm thinking because the quality of the ink and the quality of the nib is very much like a Copic, honestly, really is. I'm thinking that they're going to be, maybe he can get them down to $4.99. I mean, $3.99 would have been amazing. He said, worldwide launch, $1.99. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> My cost is $1.99, right? He said, nope. Worldwide launch, $1.99. <laughs> and I said, okay, wait a minute. <laughs> Am I hearing correctly? <laughs> very, very, um, uh, well, I guess not very often that I'm like speechless. <laughs> so I said, okay, we're, we're doing these, baby. I need them all. How many do you have? And he told me the stock and I said, you got to hold all of it for me. You got to hold every last one of all 108 colors and I'll let you know how it goes. So I have got Couture Creations, alcohol ink markers. The nibs are beautiful. The ink is beautiful and they are $1.99. That means you can get three marker, even if you're buying your Copics at, at discounted price at like $5.70, you can get three markers for every one of a Copic. Yes, Copics are refillable. I agree. And these may be at some point too, but gosh, for $2, it's okay to have a throwaway marker. I mean, you throw away your Bix and your Sharpies and your ballpoint pins all the time and they cost two bucks. So we are going to work with these today and we're going to bring it in with Simply Defined product and Ella, uh, Sizzix Ellison and their, their opulent paper. I'm gonna tilt on down. We're gonna get going and I hope you like, I hope you like what I have for you today. I'm very excited. Okay, down we go. All right, so let's see, in. I have to think about this sometimes. <laughs> And in a little bit more. Sorry, I know we're not as tech savvy as a lot of the YouTubers out there, but that's okay. All right, so here is one of the samples from the girls. It, I think this is Doris and the leaf with the tree built into it is a simply defined die, which is value priced at $13.99 for a full A2 size die, unless you get the I Want It All bundle, and then it brings them down to $9.99. Here we have another Simply Defined die. I think this one was done by Claire. Yep, Claire. <laughs> so another Simply Defined die. And well, the last sample I'm gonna show you is from Belinda. And once again, a Simply Defined die. $13.99 if you like just the one die, but if you like, well, if you like four, you might as well get the I Want It All because then it, you're getting basically for the same price, you get the extra two for free. So A2 size dies for $9.99 on the I Want It All bundle. That is Wahoo Kachu. So that's Claire and that's Doris and that's Belinda. All right, let's talk alcohol ink markers. Now I have 108 colors and they look very much like a Copic. 
they behave very much like a Copic. They have the little gray band if you want a bullet tip. And if you want the brush tip, it's here. Now it really is a brush tip. It's a beautiful nib. I think that's what shocked me the most was the nib. Alcohol-based markers are completely different than a water-based marker. Totally different than a water-based marker. Uh, these dry much faster. They don't move with water at all. They will go through your paper, absolutely, but they are meant to do blends and it is like a permanent marker. It will stay on glass and plastic and metal, but it will also go on to paper. Let's see. So lots of different colors. What I want to tell you is that the numbering system, the number, I don't know if that's going to zoom in or if it's not going to zoom in. The numbering system, maybe if I hold a couple of them, means absolutely nothing. With Copics, the numbering system is very, very important, and that's how you decide your color families. With Aussie Andrews and Couture Creations alcohol markers, you're going to make your, your swatches and you're going to make your own family of blends. You're not going to make those blends based off the numbers that you see on the tops of the markers. The numbers are for Aussie Andrews reference and not for ours. <laughs> it's a guy for you, huh? <laughs> so I want you to remember don't look at the numbers and think that you're going to be able to use them in, as the way Copics number their, their, their pens. Theirs are very specific and there's a reason they do it. These are just Ozzy Andrews numbers and that's what we're going with. And you'll just swatch out your colors and make your own blends. But for a buck 99, I just, I couldn't say no, I couldn't. He knew it too. They also have their blender pin, which really isn't a blender pin, it is a color lifter pin. When you are working with alcohol inks, let's see, when you're working with alcohol inks, uh, you can't put two of them together. I don't wanna use the, you can't put two of them together and then think you're going to take the colorless blender and magically, magically it's gonna blend the two together. It just doesn't work that way. That's not how a colorless blender works. And what's really important also, is you can see my colorless blender because I literally have one sample of every color. My nib has already changed colors. As long as my blender runs clean, and clear, it doesn't matter what color your nib is. So for Copics or for your new Couture Creations alcohol markers for a buck 99, the blender pin really is more of a color lifter pin. So if I color down and then I go in The pink is going to slowly change colors. Where I put the blender, it's going to lighten that pink up. It's kind of a misnomer what the what a blender pin because it doesn't blend anything at all. It lifts that color up. So this is when you're using this uh, most often you're using it to perhaps put a lot of ink around a, a, a image. You put your blender all the way around and then you'll put your blue and it'll feather out. Or, I mean, in, in making your blends and actually using these like alcohol, traditional alcohol markers, the zero really doesn't get used all that much. So, but today, today it is vitally important that we have it because we are going to use it all day long along with my I've just taken a selection of colors to play with so I'm gonna start with I think I'm gonna start with this die here so this is my butterfly die and the butterfly is made up of butterflies <laughs> and I'm gonna pull 
pull a sheet of opulent mystical paper. Now this is very wahoo paper. I mean, it's kind of loud. Let me tell you. Let me pull over the packaging. So opulent paper from Sizzix. This is their mystical. The, the color, the pack is called mystical. And it's got five different styles of paper in there from the glittered ombre to the wild and crazy holographic. You get 10 sheets of each and I use their opulent paper all the time. Just know that the mystical is a little more expensive than the traditional opulent paper. So the traditional opulent paper, here's the gold. Again, you get five unique textures of specialty paper. So a glitter and a mat or a mat and a brushed metal and a pearl and a mirror down at the bottom. You get 10 sheets each. It retails for $19.99, but we always have it on sale when I do a YouTube. And it's beautiful paper. Whereas the mystical runs, I think $26.99. Now the opulent like this comes in gold and silver and charcoal and rose gold and ivory, which is really a white. So I'm going to start with the mystical opulent where you've got that holographic paper and it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. I think I'm going to take my alcohol ink markers and I'm going to color straight onto my paper. So let me grab my die and let me kind of get an idea of how much I want to do. So I'm just going to trim a piece out. Now for some of you, like I said, you may be looking at this going, oh, that's just too much for me. I can't. But this dye is a very open dye and a very light, ethereal type dye. It's not very solid. So I'm going to take this opulent paper and I'm going to make it into something that it isn't. I'm going to take, let's see, let's take my pink and let's take a purple and maybe a blue. And I am literally going to color right onto my, right on to my opulent paper. I'm just going to take and color. And I'm going to scribble. I'm not even going to be pretty about it. And then maybe my blue. And wherever my blue is mixing with my pink, it's actually making a purple. So I don't even need my purple on this one. So wherever my blue is running into my pink, it's making a purple. So I'm just going to scribble. I just want to get some ink on here. If you can scribble, you can do this. And alcohol ink markers, because this is a non-porous specialty paper, it's paper on the back, but on the top it's got a sheet of film that makes it non-porous, so ink can't absorb into this. That's why you have to use an alcohol-based marker or a permanent-based marker. Can you do it with a Bic or a Sharpie? Yep, you sure can. But for a buck ninety-nine to get the benefit of an alcohol marker, holy smokes. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna grab that piece of paper, that white piece of paper, and keep it handy. Okay, so that's a run back to a true blue, and that's run back to a true pink. So it kind of looks like a hot mess, kind of. I'm going to take my baby wipe and a little bit of alcohol, which happens to be hand sanitizer, spray my baby wipe pretty good with my hand sanitizer, and I'm just going to go in there. I'm not going to try and blend it. I'm just going to try and blot it a little bit. Just kind of blot it a little bit and kind of have it smear a little bit. Not trying to blend. Just trying to blot. 
get some highs and some lows. Okay, well, it's got some highs and some lows in there. If I wanted to go back and add more color, I could. I could go back and add more color if I want. But because the dye that I'm going to use with this is so open and airy, everything is just going to kind of melt away. Those really snap good together. And I'm not going directly to my paper because I don't want it to disappear and, and move as much. I need to kind of leave it in the space that it's in. So if I just use a little alcohol and kind of blot, I'm pretty good. And it kind of gives you some highs and some lows and some different areas while not doing a total blend. Now if I bring over my, my dye, I'm going to cut straight out. So let me bring over my Sizzix Big Shot machine. I've got my Sizzix Big Shot machine with the base platform that it comes with, along with the Solo Shim that it comes with. The Solo Shim tells you, you that you do wafer dyes, chemically etched dyes. That's what this is, a wafer dye, a chemically etched dye. I am going to be using a precision base plate. For most of my dyes, it is a requirement. Oh, there I am. <laughs> Let me tilt on back. For most of my dyes, it's a requirement to use a precision base plate. Precision base plates with a Sizzix Big Shot machine allow you to do highly intricate dyes. And they cut and all the little pieces fall out and it makes your heart happy. This is a highly intricate dye. If you have another machine, the pressure may be different with, uh, with a Spellbinder machine or a Gemini machine. I don't know. I don't use them. So you may not need any kind of extra help with it. But with a Sizzix Big Shot machine, they always recommend for intricate dyes a precision base plate. And it just makes your life that much easier. I'm going to put my dye, my paper straight onto my precision base plate. And the metal is facing me, regardless if you have version one, version two, or version three. The chrome is version three, but if you have version one or two, just make sure the metal is facing you and not the directions. I'm gonna put my die right on my paper. Because this die is a rectangle and has a straight edge here, I'm gonna put it at a slight tilt. That way when it hits the roller, it's not perpendicular. I don't, it's okay if it is, but it makes a really loud thump. So, if you put your die through and it's perpendicular, when you go underneath it, especially at the end, you're going to hear a big thump. It's okay. It doesn't hurt your die. But if you just turn it at a slight angle, it feeds into the machine a little differently and doesn't make that big thump. So I'm going to send it on through. Little creaks and cracks are perfectly fine. And then I'm going to rotate and bring it on back. And the reason I rotate is because every machine has got a sweet spot. Everybody's machine is different. It doesn't matter what manufacturer makes your machine. They all have their own sweet spot. So if I rotate the die, that way my, my die has an opportunity to hit that sweet spot and cut. So let's take a look. Oh, yeah. See? That's how you know you got a good cut. That's a little bit of happiness right there. And then I'm going to start popping everything out. Now this die has some pretty big pieces. That have to come out. So it's just a matter of loosening it up from the cut. So instead of having a whole bunch of little pieces fall out, you have one big piece <laughs> that falls out. Okay, let's do this side. So maybe you have the opulent paper the mystical opulent 
and you love the ombre glitter sheets and and the white glittered sheets but the the silver holographic sheets are giving you a little bit of trouble not anymore it's so pretty isn't it pretty <laughs> but it's got to go bye bye Now look at it. We took it from being, oh my, hello. Hello, 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 here I am, look at me. That's what this paper says. This paper says, here I am, look at me, to, hello, look at me. Big difference. So do we want to put it onto, do I want to put it onto black? Ooh. Okay, so I'm going to put it onto a sheet of black paper. I'm going to grab my, my sticky dots. What are sticky dots? Sticky dots are a simply defined product. So it's exclusive to scrapbooking made simple. And oh, you can see my little fingerprints in them. They have hundreds of thousands of little micro dots. It is a uh, Eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, you get 10 sheets for $9.99. And if you do any kind of intricate dies, this is gonna make your life so much easier. You don't have to try and glue it. It's it's kind of like a Xyron without the, the, the goobers or the price, because Xyrons can be rather expensive. You just lay it right down on those dots, close it up, and then anywhere you see the die, you know the dots are going to adhere, and anywhere you don't see the die and you just see straight through, well, those dots are going to stay there, and you can use those dots later. Give it a good press, open it up, and then slowly start to peel. Because this die has a very light and airy feel to it, there's not a lot of connection points on the actual frame. So we do have to pull it up and make sure that we get all the little butterflies. Up, 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 all the little butterflies. But no glue, no fuss, no muss, no mess. And it's ready to stick down. I close that up and I use it next time. Let's go ahead and let's just line it right up on here. I'm going to leave a little bit of a black border because I happen to like that. Are they permanent? Yes, the sticky dots become permanent. They're repositionable for a while. Like if I needed to pull this up, I could and reposition re it. But once they're down and it sits for a while, it's down and, and it becomes permanent. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to cut this on out. And then just for good measure, I'm going to, so this is where we're at right now. And remember, we started, we started with this and we made that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to stick this down on here. So a little bit of Stacy tape on the back. I don't need to use my sticky dots because I'm sticking down a complete sheet of paper, a solid piece of paper as opposed to an intricate die. Stacy tape, you can tear it. You don't have to cut it. It is a little bit longer, a little bit stronger, and a little bit less money than most of the two-sided tapes out there. All double-sided tape is not the same. So if you're buying it from the Dollar Tree or the Dollar Store, it, it really, it really adhesive, good adhesive. I suppose if you're gonna, if you're gonna splurge, you splurge on the adhesive because there's nothing worse than making something and then two days later it falls apart in in the person's hand who you give it to that just breaks your heart a little bit so i'm going to go here i'm 
So Scorpel or Souk Wing Tape is a very good tape. It's the tape we used to carry before we manufactured our own. And Elizabeth Craft makes a wonderful tape. So those are tapes I am confident in. Ooh, that was a bad cut. Okay. So we went from a whole sheet of hello, hello, hello to something that is happy and bright, but not, not in your face. <laughs> happy and bright. Could I do it with other colors? Absolutely. Uh, let's just take and cut really quickly and scribble and go. So assuming you're doing this at home, I wanna show you just how quickly it can be done. So do you have holographic paper at home? Because if you do, you need to use an alcohol-based product to make it work. Using a Tombow dual brush marker isn't gonna help. Um, you need to use something that's alcohol-based. Do you have Bix and Sharpies? Because if you do, yes, you can do it. But the nice thing about this is the nib. The nib is just wonderful. And my gosh, for $1.99, I think that's about the price of a Bic or a Sharpie. Just a little bit of happiness. And I'm just gonna scribble, scribble, scribble. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Let's scribble into each other a little bit. Maybe a little bit more red. And I can make sure that my yellow, because I put my yellow on top of red, the minute my yellow So the minute that red is off there, I'm good to go. There we go, I'm good to go. These are meant to be blended together, so it's okay to touch the nibs together. It's okay to run them on top of each other. It's fine. Is this the color I used? Let's see what this color looks like. Can't tell the difference. All right, well, we're just gonna go. I'm gonna get a baby wipe, put a little bit of alcohol on it. Just to kind of blot, not to blend. I'm just trying to blot a little bit and get some highs and some lows in there. Almost like your alcohol inking, but I'm not trying to blend. There, kind of a hot mess. Grab our die. Grab our scissors big shot machine. So I've got the base plate, the base that it comes with, the solo shim that it comes with, the precision base plate that's sold separately, my paper, my die, my cut plate. Kind of turn it at a slight angle and away we go. So you want to make quick and easy cards or embellishments for your layouts, grab your markers. You've got iridescent paper from time gone by or iridescent vinyl, sticky vinyl from time gone by. Pull it out, let's use it. Really good cut. Oh, maybe I can get it out with that background staying in. Wouldn't that be nice? Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. that would be so, look at how nice that is. Get rid of this side. And we are good to go. Is 
that fast and that simple. And just like that, all my pieces come right out. Okay. I got a little bit of purple still in there from the last die cut, but I think that's good. And again. White paper. I don't know which way you like better, white paper or the black paper. I could even take the Sizzix Opulent. They call it the ivory pack, but it really is way more white than ivory. Did I cut through two sheets? Sure did. And all I have to do is glue it down. But I took a piece of paper that was really loud and really busy and made something yummy out of it. You can do this. Okay, moving on. Let's grab a piece of, let's grab another die. How about we use How about we use a glitter? How about we do... Hmm. No, how about we do this one? I'm gonna do this die next. So, in the opulent packs, like I had shown you, there's a lot of different specialty paper. There's five different specialty papers in there. So I'm going to pull over the, the silver. In the silver, you've got this, this glitter, which is very smooth. It's not a rough glitter at all. You've got a matte finish. You've got a metal finish. You've got a high gloss finish. Um, they give you a little bit of a, a, and a, a, gosh, a satiny finish. So they give you 10 sheets of all of the different five styles. I think I'm going to use that metal finish. I think that's where I'm going to start. So I'm going to grab this sheet here. And I'm going to cut I'm going to cut a piece of black paper to make my frame. So let's start with the black paper. Trim it on not down, cut it. Bring my machine over, send it through. And rotate. Ooh, well I rotated the whole thing. <laughs> oh, let's see, did it cut all the way through? Oh, it might've cut all the way through. I might not even need to rotate. Let's see what happens. If I have to send it back through, I will. But let's see how good we got. Oh, look at that. That's a happy day. All my little bits and pieces are coming out. And there is my die cut. Okay, let's see. I would say a good 50% of that made it in the trash can. All right. There we go. Super pretty on this metal type paper on the back, but it has a, has a, a, a layer over it of a metal type finish making it non-porous. I could not use a regular marker to color on here. It would just wipe right off. It would never, ever dry. So I'm gonna take my sticky dots and 
Stick this on down. Get a good press. How many times can you use your sticky dots? Oh my gosh. Well, Elena does all of the, she does all of the storyboards with just two sheets of sticky dots. They go a really, really long way. Put it right on down on my metal paper. Again, I'm gonna just leave a little bit of a border because I like that look. And look at how fast I have put my intricate die right down onto paper. Now I'm gonna go ahead and trim this on out. And then we're gonna bring over the alcohol markers again. So I wanna color this. But again, it's on a non-porous material using a typical marker like a distress marker or a Tombow dual tip water brush, uh, brush marker. Things like that are not um, a memento marker are not going to work because of the film that's on here making it non-porous. Will a Bicker Sharpie work? Yes. Will your Marabou's work? Yes. The nice thing about these is that they're $1.99, and while Marabou has only 24 colors, Ozzy Andrew has 108 colors. So I'm going to grab, I'm going to grab, do I like this pink? Is this the pink that I want to use? Let's see. Do I want to use this pink? Does this one make my heart happy? Oh, that one makes my heart happy. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start coloring this in with my pink marker. And because I've used the black cardstock, it's okay if I get pink marker on it. It's going to absorb into the black cardstock and you're never going to see the pink. So I'm just going to, let me zoom on in just a little bit more, down a little bit more. I'm just going to color in with my pink marker. And I'm only going to go about halfway up. Kids can do this, seniors can do this, experienced crafters can do this, newbie crafters can do this, and if you don't want to use dyes, you can absolutely use peel-offs. Maybe I'll just do all of it at once. So I'm not like being overly careful just trying to get my color on. And again, I'm leaving about half of my flower or half my petal empty. Okay, so you can see that even though I was going over the top, because it's black paper, that black paper is absorbing in. Now, I'm going to take a lighter pink, a lighter color. And do I like the color? Yes, I do. <laughs> I'm going to take my, I'm not going to wick it out like this. So I'm not going to take and grab that color and pull it up. I'm going to start at the top and just go down until the two colors meet and then I'm going to stop. Just gonna go down until the two colors meet and then I'm gonna stop. I need to blend them a little bit, but not too much. So I'm just gonna get this whole thing a light pink and then I'm just gonna go down and where they meet, then I'm gonna stop. And pink, 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 and then where they meet, I'm kinda, I'm gonna stop. And my nice white sheet of paper over here. Hello. And I can be, just in case I wanna make sure I don't have too much of the other color pink on there, I can be wiping this off. I'm gonna go color this whole thing light pink and then I'm gonna kind of blend just and go. And down and kind of blend and go. And down and blend and go. Look at how quick and simple that is. Blend and go. Down. Blend and go. Get it all pink and then blend and go. It's that simple. Just get it in there 
and kind of blend it in and where they meet and then call it done. Don't sit there and work it too much. And don't think too hard. And then the back one, I'm gonna do all in the light pink. All in the light pink. And what I'm gonna get is a watercolor look. That's so pretty. Just using two, two markers. And again, I'm not worrying about blending them together. I'm just getting this ink down, the, the lighter pink into the darker pink and then be done. The lighter pink into the darker pink and then be done. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I just want it to be done. Anybody can do this. If you're telling me you can't color, don't color. <laughs> but you can do this. <laughs> and done. And done. So I'm just getting that color in there and where they meet and then up top, filling it in with the pink. And just like that, just like that, I'm done. I wonder if I turn the you think if I turn it around, it'll be okay now? I will see if it has too much of a reflection based off the paper I'm using. Just like that, I'm done. But maybe you're saying that's still a little too shiny for me. I want to dull it down a little bit. Okay, easy peasy. Let us grab... Um, a piece of, how about we do it in the silver? Ooh, so this is part of the silver opulent. It is a smooth glitter. It doesn't come off in your hands. And I'm going to take this and make it, make it a little bit more than what it is. It looks pretty good now, don't get me wrong. And I could back it with a beautiful black paper or a charcoal paper or a pink paper, whatever it is that's going to make your heart happy. I could definitely mat it. And, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the negative space. So I'm gonna grab my die one more time. And I'm going to die cut out. So I want to use the negative from this cut. It's going to give me the positive too, and the positive is the actual pretty flowers, but I want the little bits and pieces that are going to fall out. So let's bring my machine on over. And my paper, my die at a slight angle. And let's send it on through. Okay, that sounded pretty good. Let's rotate it and send it on back. Now this is a highly coated paper, so it's a piece of white paper on the bottom, but on the top, it is a beautiful glitter, highly coated paper, almost like a plastic on top of it. This is also 
a non-porous type of paper. So you can't take a regular pin and color on here and think it's going to stay. It's just going to wipe right off. It also means, well, no, that came out really great. Sometimes when you die cut, you might have to pull a little bit to get some of these guys out because of uh, the coating that's on the paper, but these look like they're coming out no problem, easy peasy. Okay, but what I really want is the negatives. So, I need this one. Oh, Stacy, I should have paid attention. Okay, that one's there. So this one. And then this one is here. And then this big one is here. And this little guy goes right here and then a couple small ones I will get that small one taped down and this one and that one so I still have my die that I can get all my little bits and pieces out of and use this at a later date But I've changed it. I've taken away that very metallic brushed look where you don't have a matting look to it. And I've added, just by using the negative, the opportunity to really make them pop. Now, how do I get it down? Same thing, put this up there. Same thing, sticky dots. I'm gonna do this little one first because it's so small. Little bit of sticky dot. And then stick it right where it belongs. So you are actually paper piecing. But paper piecing, easy peasy. Okay. Now let's get this big one in there. Oh, what did I do with that one? Where did it go? Where did it go? It's still in there. Oh, good. Okay, let's pull that one out. So let's get my big one done. Sticky dots. Rub, rub, rub. Pull up. It's now ready to adhere down to whatever it is you want it to stick down to. Line it up, put it in place, sticky dot, and before you know it, you used the brushed to get the look on the flowers. We needed to use this to get the look on the the watercolored look on the flowers only we used alcohol markers and we really we just kind of smushed them together but look at how beautiful they are then if you don't like this look you just come back and paper piece on top whatever you wanted it to look like so it it, it who would know that underneath this silver is this who would know but I wanted that metallic to paint on with my alcohol markers. And the Sizzix opulent paper is just ideal for this because all of that opulent paper is specialty paper. So you can't use alcohol markers on just plain old cardstock. It will just look like a marker. It won't have anything unique or special about it. It's when you get it on non-porous things that allow you to blend it and move it and play with it. And if you're gonna go ahead and use it to color your stamps in, well then there's specialty paper for, for alcohol markers. And 
I'm pretty sure Ozzy Andrews probably coming out with his own specialty card stock for his alcohol markers. I don't think he has it yet because I didn't get a sample of it. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he's got it in the works. So I know a lot of people will use Nina paper if they're going to stamp and do their coloring with their alcohol markers so they get all that beautiful shading. Look at that. Who would ever know that that is underneath it? But that's what allowed me to get that watercolory look to it. Oh, are you looking at your opulent paper totally different now? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But let's move on. Okay, next. How about we work with... Ooh, how about we work... Maybe we'll, we'll, maybe we'll stay with this one. Maybe we'll stay with this one. Okay, I'm going to cut another piece to get my... my uh, top layer my my design so I'm almost making my own my own peel off sticker I like doing it in black because then if I go over the black with a, a marker it just absorbs in and you don't see it so I like using the black because it hides all my oopsies and let's bring it on over and let's die cut super fast one two three ABC Roll it on through. And is it gonna, oh it did. I think there must be some sticky on my die. I think there may be some adhesive on it. Oh, yep, there it is. Let's see if it cut all the way through. And if it didn't, I can send it back. Oh, looks pretty good. All my little pieces fall out. That's the beauty of a precision base plate. And I'm not needing to save any of the background because I want the positive. I want the actual die. This time I say we use some, how about we use some gold? How about we use the gold glitter? Hmm? Yeah, let's try some gold glitter. Okay, bring back my sticky dots. Put it down. Now, can I change the color of the sticky dots? No, I can't. I would like to say I could, but I would have to order enough that I would sell them to you and my kids would sell them to your kids and their grandkids would sell them to your grandkids. That's how long we would have them because I would have to place such a big order. Can I change the color of the liner? No. Why? Same thing. <laughs> so just make sure that one side doesn't have anything and one side has the sticky. Let's pull it on up. And let's put it on down. So instead of using that metally looking paper, this time I'm going to use the opulent glitter paper. And just like that, stuck. So even if you never use alcohol markers or you never choose to color them in or you don't want to do any of that, but you do intricate dyes, the sticky dots are your best friend. They are an absolute game changer. I wished I had come out with them sooner, but better late than never. We've had them, gosh, we've had them for about a year now. And they do what they say they're going to do. There we go. All trimmed out. Now, can I color on my gold? Sure I can. It's as smooth as smooth can be. Let's play with the red. Let's, what red? This red? Let's play with the red. And this time, 
the blender pin is going to come into play. I did not use the blender pin when I did this. If I had, it would have lifted the color up. So I took that lighter tone of pink to make it my blender pin. It laid down some color and allowed me to kind of move the ink around, blend into each other to give you that watercolory look. Had I used a blender pin on this to go in there and move it around, it just would have lifted it up. And I'm not trying to do that. Here, however, this is a different material. The, the, the gold glitter is different than this flat, metallic, metally looking paper. This has got a little texture to it. It's smooth as can be. And like I said, the glitter doesn't come off, but it is manufactured a little differently. The coating on top is a little bit different than this. So it is going to behave differently than this paper. Let's take some red and brush tip and let me put some red kind of down towards the bottom. Now we do this on, with white glitter all the time, but what about on colored glitter? I've done this numerous times on a on either my glitter without glitter, oh, it's a solid white glitter that has no iridescence to it at all, or on a transparent glitter that has iridescence. I've just gone down there and added some color. Then I'm going to take my blender tool. And even if my blender tool tip is blue, as long as it runs clean, it's good to go. Cut this down a little bit. So I'm going to use this as kind of my cleaning because I'm going to take that color. I wonder if I want to use some of this too. Do I want to put some of that down there too? Ooh, pretty. That one didn't come out. Let's get that little guy out all the way at the end. You didn't pop out. There we go. Better. All right, I'm gonna take my blender pen and I'm just going to pull up. And as I pull up, I clean off my brush because the more I pull up, the softer I want that color to become. So I'm pulling up my color up and wicking it up and then taking it and rubbing it off and then not starting back down at the bottom, but where I left off, I continue to pull that color up. So it has a very soft look to it. and you get that ombre effect. So let me pull up and up and let me pull up and up and up and and up. So you can see I'm starting to get a beautiful stained glass look to it. Only I'm not on white paper, I'm on gold. Let's do the other side. And take some of it off and then finish pulling it up. And pull that up and pull that up. Now, normally a Copic blender pin is going to run you almost $6. This is $2. $2. And for $2, if you if that really bothered you about the nib, you could you could afford to have one perhaps in your favorite color families. <laughs> <laughs> so that you put a thingy around it like my blending brushes that say reds and yellows and purples and pinks and whatever. But you would have an opportunity at that price to have multiple blending pins 
because you do use it a lot. Now, if I want to go back in and add more color, no problem. All I have to do is add more color to my bottom and then come back and pull again. And maybe I want that bottom really saturated. So when I pull, I'm not going to start at the very bottom. I'm going to start where I left off, where that, that line from the pin has stopped. I'm going to start there to pull up because I want that bottom really, really dark. The darker it is at the bottom and the lighter it is at the top, the more of an ombre look you have. So let's go in and I can just, I can just darken these and just do a little bit of a pull. But because it's an alcohol based ink, it will dry on this glitter paper where, uh, gosh, uh, distressed ink or a memento ink or a Tombow will not. All right. Now, what if I want to add another color to it? Can I? Sure. Let's grab, let's grab a yellow. And let's start at the tops and add some yellow. So I'm just daubing my color in just at the tops of my flowers. So now I've added some yellow, but I need to then go back and with my blender pen, do the same thing. Pull that yellow down into that red. Pull that yellow down into the red and make a blend. Typically this is done on a transparent glitter, but why can't we use a beautiful sheet of gold glitter to warm that tone. If this was on transparent glitter, that would be very red and very yellow. But on the, on the gold, it's a warm, beautiful tone. And then I can come back in and I can do my tops. Well, I can do those in yellow. So I can just color these in in yellow because those are the tops of the petals behind it. And since the tops are all yellow, And if I want more color, I add more color and I just blend it until my heart is happy. Think less, blend less, just go and do. You've got this. Don't think too long. Think long, think wrong. Just move the color and let it be. So let's go super fast. I'm going to add some red to the bottom. Red to the bottom. Red to the bottom, and then let's just do this one while I'm here. Okay. Blend it out. My blending brush, I've got reds on there, blending brush, wick it out, wick it out. When I mean wick, I'm wicking it out. And then let's do this one really fast. Clean my brush. So 
So Ozzy Andrew's talking about doing a refill for the blender. Don't know when that will be, but again, at $2 a blender, man, and they carry a large amount of ink. Okay, get my red off and come back in with my yellow. It doesn't matter that I'm going on top of my black. My black cardstock is just absorbing that ink so you can't even tell. So you don't have to worry about being nice and staying within the lines. No! And then I'm just gonna wick that down into the red. this one almost blended itself and before you know it look at what you've done a totally different look than this one this one way more watercolory this one way more stained glassy but again what if you're not crazy about that background what if it's just too much gold glitter for you i wanted to use the gold glitter as my palette to move my alcohol ink but maybe i don't want that to be the main portion of my card how about we grab some charcoal oh that's really pretty okay out of the charcoal opulent pack. Let's cut one more time, which is gonna give me a, now a, a charcoal die cut, but I want that negative. This takes your, your coated paper, your opulent paper, and gives you a whole new use for it. Gives you a whole new opportunity. Do you have peel-offs, peel-off stickers? Sure, put your peel-offs right down and go for it. Just go for it. Let's see, I need to kind of rotate and die cut. didn't need to do that because it's been cutting so beautifully the first run through but okay so I need this piece and that piece oh and that little piece and this piece and this piece and the last one is still stuck in there and that one and did I get the little triangle there's the little triangle okay so I think those are the pieces that I need and the rest of this I can just have it all fall out throw all of these away. So now I have this to use at a later date, but I'm gonna take my sticky dots and this piece and this piece, and then hopefully these are in the right facing the right direction. Ooh, I don't know if I did on that one. You know what? I'm going to wait on that one. 
I'm going to put these in first. Put these up there to make sure that I put them in the right direction when I put the sticky on them. Bring this back on over. Did I do it backwards? I did I know. Yes. No. Yay. <laughs> Holy smokes, artichokes. <laughs> okay, let's just set it on in there. Line it on up. <gasps> Look at us. See, I love that. Now, you may like it with the gold, and you might have been just as happy with the gold. I like it. Oh, I think it, that just makes it totally pop. Okay, so let's pull out my other pieces. This one, this one goes here, just like a little puzzle. Paper piecing at the easiest. Oh, I bet that wasn't a piece. Huh, okay, it wasn't even a piece. Let's get the, the larger one in there. Let's make sure I do it right. Okay, that works. So let's go ahead and put some sticky on the back. And then you have to decide. What do you want it to look like as a finished piece? You are not limited. I wanted that gold to color on because I wanted those warm, rich, beautiful colors. But I didn't want it to all be gold. Oh no, I lost a piece. Where is it? Oh, I bet I threw it away. Okay, say la vie. But I kept them all. Not so much. Do I want? No, I'm not going to go looking for it. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> and this one there. And this one there. So all I'm missing is that one. One piece, Stacy. Oh well. And there. And look at that paper piecing ABC one, two, three. Now I'm only missing that one little piece. That's all I'm missing. Let's cut it really fast because I have to finish. It will bother me if I don't. All I'm gonna do is cut that one little piece that I lost. All I'm gonna do is cut that one little piece ready. Uh, in and back and hopefully ooh, that's enough to cut that one little piece yay sorry but I just have to finish I can't not do it right it will bother me and then we will move on Make sure I've got it going in the right direction. Yep, that's what fits. Pull it up. And down it goes. Okay, right? 
Yay. So we have done, where's my cute little, we've done literally just scribbling right on the opulent paper and die cutting. Literally scribbling so that we diffuse some very woohoo paper. But isn't that so pretty? I love these. I think these are beautiful. And scribbling. Who would have thunk? Then we used the opulent paper that is the more metal looking background to kind of give a watercolory look. And then we paper pieced on top of it to add that glittery from the opulent, but still having the palette underneath the paper, the, the paper underneath so that we could use our alcohol markers. Got to use alcohol markers on this. It's the only thing that's going to work. Yes, you can use Bix. Yes, you can use Sharpies. Yes, you can use the Marabou. But for two bucks and 108 different colors, I would definitely consider starting to collect the Couture Creations. At that price and at the quality, it was, I just, I couldn't say no. And then we blended. Again, I used the gold as my backdrop, as my, my, my surface to start blending that paint so that as opposed to it being on white where it's going to be really vibrant and really bold, I wanted it to have that warm feel to it. But then I came back in and paper pieced with the charcoal opulent to make it really pop. But if you don't like it, okay. Ooh. It's setting, it's setting, it's setting. Okay, you could have just left it on the gold. Whatever makes your heart happy. You have options. And if you already own the opulent paper, well, happy day for you. If you have alcohol, I, I definitely, even if you have Copics, I would not use my Copics to do this. If you've spent that much for Copic markers, don't waste the ink. <laughs> They're so expensive to refill. Get the $2 markers and that way you're, you're happy. You can color until your little heart's content. So we've done all of that. Now, now I want to take, I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do the leaf. I think I'm going to do a leaf and then I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to do the leaf and then we're going to end with some white glitter. Okay, so another die. Same thing, I'm going to chop it right out of black. So there's no editing of these YouTubes. What you see is what you get. And I don't pre-make everything so I can just sub it right on in. The idea is that this is a full length class to teach you. Do you see the same thing a couple times? Yes, but they always say repetition is the best way to learn. <laughs> okay, let's roll it on through. And let's rotate it and send it on back and this leaf is very intricate so I'm gonna look to see whether I've got it come oh yeah that looks okay no we're good that's a happy day Let's start getting all of my pieces out. So it's a very, very intricate leaf. The leaf actually has a tree built into it as part of its pattern. Okay. I think I got all of them out. Well, if not, they'll st maybe stay back when I put it on sticky dots. Okay, so trash, trash, trash. Oh, I'd say a good 90% of that made it in there. And this time, I'm going to pull from the rose gold. Maybe a pack you wouldn't have thought to use. 
I'm going to pull from the rose gold because I'm looking at the tone of the paper. I'm looking at the color of the paper and thinking what markers would I want to use. And then having something that is not just white, having a base color gives me a little more opportunity because I don't have to color all of it. We are going to use white, but I am going to pull. I am going to pull from the rose gold pack. And let's get my, let's get a sheet. Let's keep using the one we're using. Put my die cut down. Close it up. Give a good press, press, press. Pull it up and Set it down on my rose gold paper. So I'm probably, I probably could still do a few, you know, some little things on here, but I can see that I'm getting towards the end of my sheet. However, how many different dies have I put down? So let's put it on here. Leave a little bit of a of a border, just because it becomes an instant mat. And I like that. Let's cut it out. And again, the reason I chose the rose gold is because I know what color I want my leaf to be. And I know that I'm going to be using some tones that are going to work beautifully with this color. So there's my leaf. Now I'm going to take my marker. Hello, Brown. Hello, Stacy. Very nice to see you. And my clear. And I'm going to come in here with my brown. And I'm going to add brown. And I'm going to start doing the branches of my tree. A tree, yes, if you look closely at this die, there is a tree built in. Down, down. So I can follow the branches. And add a little bit of my brown. And then I'm going to pull it out. So I put all my brown in at once. I put all my brown in at once. Now I'm going to take that blender. It runs clear, so I'm good to go. And I'm going to start moving that brown. and just wicking it up. There's nothing for it to blend into, so all I have to do is wick it up so that it covers when I do it all of my glitter in any one in any one area. I'm just wicking it up. Now when I do it, it has, it changes the color of the ink. It has almost a reddish brown look to it when I add my alcohol blender. But when it dries, 
it dries back down to the brown that I started with. But because I'm on this, this rose gold colored paper, it's not white anywhere that it's a little lighter and it's a little faded up. It's not white. It's got that beautiful same hue to it. You wouldn't think that the rose gold would be so useful. It really, really is. I know everybody would gravitate to the, the gold and the silver and the, you know, the ivory, which is really white. But this rose gold does a beautiful job when you're using earth tones like this. It's just gorgeous. And pretty much just that quickly, I've colored my tree. Now you can see, can you see, I hope I get there fast enough. It's kind of got a ready, a red brown look to it. But as it dries, it comes back to the color it was. And now you really can see my tree in there. And if I need to add more brown, I can. I can go back in if I want to add brown someplace else or I missed a branch. It's all good. Here, if I, oh, I didn't even blend that one, Stacy. Hello. Let's blend you up. So I think I'm going to leave it the way it is. And then I'm going to come in with some green. And I'm starting with a very light green. Very light green. Light green. But on this paper, it looks different. And I'm going to color all of my non-brown in this light green. And again, you're saying, but it's on this rose gold paper. I know, and that rose gold paper is giving that warm tone that I'm looking for. If I had done it on gold, it would look different. If I had done it on silver, it would look different. Whatever, whatever base paper you use is going to change the color of the alcohol marker that you're using. So I just want to come in here and I want to add green. Now I'm just coloring straight. I'm not wicking. I'm not doing anything like that. I am literally just filling it in in green. Anywhere there's no brown, where I didn't put some brown and wick it out, I'm filling it in with green. And at $2 a pen, I'm comfortable. If this was a Copic marker at six or $7, I definitely would be more sparing with my ink. But there is a ton of ink in these markers and I am free to go. So I'm gonna color the whole thing in green. I'm laying down a base color. And again, I'm going right over the black. I don't care, I'm going right over the black because my green ink is being absorbed right into that black cardstock. So I don't have to worry about staying within the lines. Okay. Okay, I'm all green. Yay. But I want more dimension to it. I want more depth to it. What do I do? I come back with a darker green. But I don't color the entire thing in a darker green. I'm going to daub it in and then come back with my lighter green and move it out. Or I can come back with my blender, get rid of my brown, and move it out. 
So let me go in there and let me daub a bunch of green. And let me, I would definitely use the, I mean, if you want to use the, the lighter green to wick it out, you can, but I would save that color for being a color. And I would just take my, my colorless blender and start to wick it out. Just drag it on out, drag that color out. Every now and then, clear off your brush and drag it on out. And what that's gonna do is build depth and shadow and highlight and mid-tones. It's going to give you an appearance that's not so flat. And it's absolutely perfect. The rose gold paper is perfect for it. Look at the difference just colored in, but look at what starts to happen when you come back and honest to goodness, I really am just adding some color at the base because that's where you want it to be the darkest. Add some color at the base and then pulling that color, pulling that color out. It's just there, it's that simple. It was that easy. Color at the base. And then pulling it out. And as it dries, the color may change a little bit while you're working with the alcohol, while you're working with the blender. But as it dries, it comes back to the color that you started with. It's just this simple but you can't do this unless you're doing it on the right paper. And normally we use glitter, transparent glitter, and we make our own glitter paper. But I thought, my gosh, why can't we do it on the Sizzix Opulent paper? It looks wonderful. And because you've got, now if this was on white paper, up here it would be white. But because I wicked it out, and it started with a beautiful color of base of my paper, I didn't have to color the whole thing. I could wick it out and let it ombre into the rose gold paper. If I was using white, I would have a very, I'd have a lot of white accent on this tree right now. And it's just about adding it in. Don't give it much thought. Don't sit there and think too long or too hard. Remember to every now and then, clean your brush off because it's just it's got ink on it so you want to you want to eliminate some of that ink when you're wicking it out because that's what lets it pull and gives you those highlights and those midtones is by the absence of ink by removing some of the ink as you're pulling it out and once you pull you don't go back all the way down to the bottom you finish where you left off. I love this. And I love that I didn't have to get my glitter out to do it. And that in the opulent packs, there's so many different, all of them have a different uh, finish to them. The five different styles in each opulent pack, you can do this with the paper that's in there so easily. It was like a, um, hello, Stacy. why didn't you think of this? Well, I didn't have alcohol markers like this before. And the brush tip is what's so important. The brush tip makes the difference. Can you do it with Bix and Sharpies? Yes, you will still need to have a blender pen. You will still need to buy that. Otherwise, there's no way for you to wick it on out. A typical non-alcohol blender pin is not the same. You're on non-porous paper. You have to treat it differently. If I was on regular paper, I might be able, I would be able to get away with using 
my uh, my Tombos if I was on regular paper with regular glitter. I'd be able to get away with using my Tombos. What do you think? And then again. Uh, this one. Um, let's pull from the same pack. So rose gold. So let's pull. Let's pull that. Let's cut it real quick. I'm thinking one run should get me the back out, which is what I want. But since we don't want to waste paper, let's go ahead and we'll send it back through again. That way we get the actual die cut and I can use that at a later time. But what I want is this piece. I want that piece. And I want that piece. Let's get my sticky dots. Oh yeah, I've got some good ones on the side here. Oh yeah, lots of them there. And I'm gonna change it from the glitter to a solid back. But because I left this here, I've also got a little glitter border all the way around it. Okay, so what did I do with the other pieces? Oh, there's the other piece. Phew. Okay, let's lay it in and make sure that I have it. Yep, that's the correct way. Let's find some sticky dots. I got lots on the corners, lots on the edges. Let's put that down. Totally changing the look. Do you like it with the glitter back here? Or do you like it like this? Your choice. You have options. Because the paper came out of the same pack, it all coordinates together. Look at how pretty is that. And then my last piece. And I'm just picking up the dots that are left. Okay, and I would do those three up there too, but for sake of time. So this, or this, or this. this, but we have one more to show you. One more! Yes, I know, it's already two hours probably. It is what it is. Now I'm not gonna throw this away because all of these are gonna come right out and I still have my die to put over there. Let's pull out this one. Yay! And let's cut it in black real quick. And 
and send it on through. Okay, and let's see. Am I going to be able to rotate it? Oh, yeah. Well, okay, yeah. <laughs> the face came up, but that's all good. I don't need that piece, and let's send it on back. And this time, I'm going to use glitter paper from the what they call the ivory pack. It is not ivory, it is white. Don't know why they call it ivory, but they do. So here's my die. Get all my little bits and pieces out. And then let's bring over my ivory pack, which is right here. So, the ivory pack, the glitter in the ivory pack, the glitter sheet is not like the glitter sheets in all the other packs. All the other packs, it's been this very smooth. With the ivory, it's much more chunky. It's much rougher. Doesn't make it bad, it just makes it different. It's a much coarser glitter, but it's a glitter without any iridescence to it at all, which is lovely because if you're doing this for maybe somebody who is not so blingy, but you want the opportunity to color it, they're never going to know that it's glitter paper underneath. Let's grab my sticky dots. This one open? Yes. Grab my sticky dots. Put it down. Give a good rub and pull up. And let's put it right down on a coarser sheet of glitter paper. I want you to see that even if the glitter paper you have is a little more coarse, it's not as smooth, that doesn't mean you can't do this. Let's trim it out. Let's get our markers. So now it's up to you. What color do you want to do? I don't know. We could do the dark purple, and maybe I can find a super light purple here. Maybe a light pink. Well, let's see how light that pink is. So what if I went in there, and I need my blender pen. Always need my blender pen. And I go in there, and I dot. So I dot 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 and because you've got a brush tip that's the tip you want to dot with is the brush tip it's beautiful and dot 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 i need to leave negative space if i don't leave negative space when i wick this out there's no place for it to go if i color the whole thing purple and then try and take my blending brush it isn't going to do anything it's all purple there's no place for the color to move you have to let it have some room so what if i did that and then i come over and see i need to clean my brush because it's got all that green on it but once it starts to run clear i'm good to go then i can come in and start wicking this up. You can, I, I wonder if you can hear it. It's, you can even hear that it's a little rougher. Uh, stick, 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 it's 
hot in here. Stick, stick, stick. Needed to give it time to set. It's a little rougher than the soft glitter paper we've been using. That doesn't make it bad, it just makes it different. It gives you a little bit more of a bling bling to it, but not a bling bling with iridescence. And I can just come in here and start pulling that color. And because this is pre-made glitter paper, you don't have to worry that because you're using the alcohol, it's going to eat through the adhesive. We, when we make our own glitter paper, you have to be a little more careful because the alcohol can eat through the adhesive, but not here. And I'm just going to pull it up and it will create its own highlight, its own mid-tone and its own shadow. And can I blend the colors? Yes, I'm gonna do it on this side. I'm gonna blend the colors. That way you can see the difference. So let's do, let's do a couple here where I'll start in purple. And pull it out. Start in purple. And pull it out. I'm just wicking it on out. And then let's try that pink. Well, let's try this really soft pink. Ooh, pretty. And I'm going to put that at the top. and bring that down. Get rid of my purple. Don't want my purple. And pull that in. really is up to you what you like better. Do you want to blend your colors? Do you want to leave them solid? Just one color? Choice is yours. Do you like it blended? Where you've got the pinks going into the purples? Do you like just the purples? Entirely up to you what you do. But it all starts with an alcohol-based ink. I love Copic. I do, they're a beautiful marker, but so are these. And when I can bring you something for $1.99 that gets the job done and gives you a beautiful nib like the Copic nibs, oh my gosh. It's hard to say no to that. Well, I couldn't say no to that. Alcohol markers can be very expensive. They can be cost prohibitive for a lot of people. But at two bucks, every time I say two bucks, I think two buck Chuck. Now I don't drink, I, 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 I don't drink, but, but I think two buck Chuck is from Trader Joe's. <laughs> I don't know if it's cooking wine or drinking wine or I don't know, but I just hear two buck Chuck in my head. <laughs> Gosh, and I could come in with the pink if I wanted and pink down and pink down and pink down and then blend down. Ooh, okay, that's starting to look really pretty. I need to blend up here more. Okay, I'm starting to really dig on the two color, just on the tips. 
your choice. But this is on a totally different paper. This is on the opulent paper. Give it time to stick. It's on the opulent paper, but it's the ivory. And the ivory does have five different finishes. They've got a high gloss and a, a pearl and a, a brushed metal and a soft touch and a glitter. But their glitter is a much more, it's a coarser glitter than any of the other packs. But it works just as well and it's just as pretty. And I could go in if I wanted to and I don't know. I should grab stay down. Oh, that's gonna drive me crazy, but it's probably 110 in my office right now. Everybody's gone home for the day and the air conditioner is turned off. <gasps> yeah, I'd say it's a good 110 in here right now. It's a good thing I'm used to a dry heat. <laughs> Does that really ever make heat any better when it's a dry heat? I don't know. <laughs> Okay, so let's grab this one really quick. Let's cut it really quick, and then we will finish up for the day. I just, I need to, I need to. So if you don't like all of that white glitter, you don't wanna finish this and mount it, although it's turning out beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's turning out beautiful. But you don't want the rest of that white glitter Okay, roll, 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 roll. Chances are I'm only gonna need to go once because I just want the background, but if you wanna still use that die at a later date, go ahead and do your rotate and send it on back. That way you've got a die cut ready to go next time you wanna use it. But all I want are those two pieces, the top and the bottom. I want this piece and I want this piece. The rest of it I can use. Oh, car backfired. The rest of it I can use at a later date. But look at how beautiful is that? Oh my gosh, that's not so pretty. Ah! Okay, but I'm not using those pieces. <laughs> but it makes me want to. <laughs> Okay, it's gonna drive me crazy, but there's nothing I can do. It's hot in here. Maybe I press down harder and give more time for it to set. Okay, so get them down. Pull them up. see this one goes this one goes here so I'm just gonna hide all that extra glitter so that whoever gets it doesn't know because you will have finished coloring it doesn't know that it started as a ton of glitter as a glitter paper that way it has a little sparkle to it and again, because it doesn't have an iridescence to it, the sparkle is just that, it's sparkle. It's not bling bling, it's bling bling. It's, it's nice. And let's put this one in there. Now it is physically gonna pain me not to finish this one and not finish coloring it, but I won't but it will pain me. <laughs> so, so pretty. So easy to do. And I just wanted that white glitter as my, as my foundation, 
for me to use that alcohol ink and move it around. It really is up to you what you want to do. Do you just want to scribble, scribble, scribble? All right, scribble, scribble, scribble. Do you want more of a watercolory look? Maybe this is the paper that you haven't used and you've got this, this metal sheet left. Maybe you've got 10 sheets of it. Well, now look at what you can do with it. Stick. Look at how pretty on colored glitter paper. And who would have ever thought that the rose gold would look so beautiful? It's about options, and when you have the right paper and the right tools, you've got them. All right, we did a lot, a lot, but it's a worldwide launch, baby. And when I say he's got 108 colors, I mean he's got 108 colors. <laughs> Doesn't that make your heart happy? That makes my heart happy. It was hard to, I just grabbed a random selection of different reds and yellows and purples and blues. Oh, no, Stacy, not on my white, white shirt. That would be painful, that would be bad. I like that the caps snap. You hear them snap. So I just grabbed a selection of Couture Creations alcohol inks the markers are $1.99. Ignore, ignore the, the numbers on the top. They're for Ozzy Andrew, not for us. You're not gonna use them the way, you're not gonna number them. They're not gonna work in the way Copics do, how you use the numbers to determine what are your blends. Here, you're gonna swatch them out and you're gonna make your own blends, but at two bucks a pen, you can do that. And look at all the things we did. And we didn't even use them for what most people are gonna use them for, which is coloring their stamps and doing all the shading and shadowing on their stamps. Oh no, we took it to a totally different level. I have to finish this. I won't on camera, but I will, because I, I am loving the purple and the pink. I am just digging it. Okay, so, holy smokes. What do we have on sale? Well, the Mystical Opulent, which is where this one came from, is not part of the I want it all because it's more money for the pack. So you can buy the Mystical Opulent all by itself. It's yummy, yummy paper. But then we have all the standard colors, the charcoal and the ivory, which is really white, and the rose gold and the silver and the gold. We have an I want it all on them or you can just get the one color or the two colors that you love the most. They're all in the YouTube yummies as is the mystical, it's just not part of the I want it all. Then we have all 108 pens. Should I do an I want it all? I don't know. We'll think about it. If it's there, it's there, and if it's not, it's not. And I want it all, or 108 at $2 each. Pick the ones that make you happy, start collecting them. They're, they're a good product for a price that is unbelievable. Thank you, Ozzy and Andrew. Thank you for overnighting them. <laughs> then we have my exclusive dies. So we've got the butterfly and the leaf we used today. They also come with words. This one has a little, little butterfly. So this one is yesterday, tomorrow, and then now is the big one. So we used both of those today. And we used both of these today. The tulips come with the words as well. They're $13.99 a die, unless you do the I want it all, and then they're $9.99. And then the last two are background dies, just background dies. I know you guys have been asking and I couldn't tell you. <laughs> but I have two just background dies in this collection. When have you ever seen an A2 die for $9.99, right? So if you like the I want it all, that's what they're gonna come to, and if not, you're still at only $13.99. They are value priced. When they are gone, they are gone. I don't get them back in, and the only place you can get them is Scrapbooking Made Simple. They are my designs, so. 
six dies. $59.99 or one die, $13.99. Okay, let's do samples. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's start with Belinda. Here's Belinda, and she's actually double layered the flower in the gold and in the charcoal. So Belinda. And here she's double layered the background dies. So she's done the same background dye, only flipped it to give more texture. She's got her little cat down there and then the flowers. Same thing here. She took the background dye and layered it on top of each other. Same background dye, but she rotated it so it didn't line up perfectly. This is Belinda. And here is Belinda's butterfly. Well done. Ha 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 ha. And then we go to Elena. Elena has used the opulent mystical background or paper to do with the background dye. So she's just used one of the background dyes on this one. And she's used the other background dye on this one. Again, with the opulent, see the holographic? But when you die cut it, it's not so in your face as if you're looking at a full sheet. And here she has paper pieced in the flower. So this is Elena. And I love this one. She's paper pieced in the flower. And here she's used the dye as a stencil. So she's stenciled with the dye. And here she's offset three times to give some dimension to the butterfly. And her last one is the tree. Well, the leaf with the tree. Right, doesn't that look good? And she picked a background paper that, I mean, it just looks great. And then she paper pieced. But I'm not done with Elena. I'll come back to her in a minute. Then we have Claire. So I showed you this one in the beginning. Just as simple and easy as can be. So pretty. And Claire. And then a totally different butterfly. Same die, completely different. Same here. A totally different look than this one, but using the exact same die. And look at the difference in this, the size of the cards. A2, five by seven. Ah, oh, this one's so pretty. Does she want it this way? Does she want it that way? I think she wants it this way. And she cut it twice, and so she cut this piece out of the other. She just cut that center out and then layered it right on top so you have the difference. And look at her leaf. So you've got yesterday, tomorrow, and now. And then look at this. Okay, she's sending this to somebody in the UK because this has got to be at least an eight by eight. <laughs> Vanessa, here's your birthday card. That's her sister in the UK. <laughs> she will appreciate the size. <laughs> Claire's going back to her roots. <laughs> but she must have liked this 8x8 paper and didn't want to chop it into bits. <laughs> okay, Claire, I feel ya. And then I've got 
an altered art from Claire. So she's used the leaf, she's used it as a stencil, she's used the dye. Look at the stenciling is beautiful. And an altered art from Claire. So pretty. Or mixed media. And, but I'm not done with Claire yet either. And then we move to Doris, who has opted to stay on the design team to everybody's wahoo kachu. She is enjoying her retirement, but the girl, a creative girl has got to be a creative girl. So we are so thrilled that she comes back and she visits every, you know, to pick up the supplies. It all that's the background dye. Isn't that beautiful? Just ask me, I'll tell you. <laughs> no, I shouldn't say that, but I do like it. And she's done it with an acetate and the opulent paper. <laughs> Here's another one with the background. Just using the background again with opulent. And then she's stamped inside. Now if I could just get her to come back one day a week. <laughs> no, Doris, not really. Really, no. <laughs> I'm kidding, but not. <laughs> Look at how beautiful is this. <laughs> I think Doris just turned me off. It's just one day, Doris. What is one day? That's what Mary Lynn said. I'm just going to work one day because Mary Lynn retired years ago. She, <laughs> she doesn't work one day, please. <laughs> God bless her. <laughs> Somehow I convinced her that one day really is four. <laughs> well, that also kind of gives you a clue that we're not a young staff here. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> We've got a few young whippersnappers, <laughs> but the rest of us, not so much. <laughs> but we look good for our age, don't we, Claire? <laughs> here we go. Beautiful, right? So new girl, SMS girl Renee, started after all the samples because the design team take these home to work on. So I don't have anything new from Renee this week, but I will next week. Look at this. Yay. Oh, isn't that so cute? Those are the, that's the extra butterfly that you get. So this was all Doris who's working every Wednesday. <laughs> I'm gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> and then Elena. Elena with her altered art piece. And of course it lights up. So I don't know, I don't know if you can see it, but it lights up. So she took the flower. So cute, Elena. And then I have some layouts for you. Oh, is this class going to be long, 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 long? Okay, first one is from Doris. Let me go back just a little bit. So first layout is from Doris. You've got the die cut, you've got the die cut, you've got the die cut. But then you also have surprise! Surprise! And she used the little butterfly from the butterfly die set. That little extra butterfly that you got. She's put them here and here and here and there. And you've got die cut and die cut. And then the leaves and surprise. So this is Doris's layout. And then we have, I believe this is Claire's layout. Oh, see, Claire used it as a stencil. Look at, she stenciled right to the paper. She's a master at that. And then she built the tree. She is an absolute master at that. The stenciling right on the paper. Man, she's good. So a beautiful layout from Claire. And the last one is a layout from Elena. Hello, Elena. Look at how cute. See, bright and happy and colorful and so spring summery. It just makes you want to go out and take pictures so you can put them on the page. <laughs> We've done that before. 
staged our, you know, the page was so perfect that you went out and staged the picture so it went with the page. Is that wrong? Don't judge. <laughs> Don't judge. <laughs> okay. All right, you guys. Holy smokes, artichokes. <laughs> it's hot. It's long. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> but it was fun. I told you we would have a good time. I told you. I told you. Oh my gosh. And the product is beautiful. The, the markers, the alcohol ink markers at two bucks. Yes, please. Hello. Absolutely. Worldwide launch here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. Thank you, Ozzy, Andrew, and everybody at Couture Creations. Simply Botanical is released. So this month, Simply Botanical between Spellbinders and Scrapbooking Made Simple is here. Wahoo, Kachu, that's value priced. An exclusive, the, the Simply Defined are exclusive to us. The only thing that I don't have exclusive is from Sizzix. Hello, Victorious Victor and Sizzix Sarah. We need to get me something exclusive. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not really. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, you guys, where are you going to get all this great product? Well, for the most part, it's going to have to be scrapbooking made simple this week. You may be able to find the opulent paper at your local independent retail store. Absolutely. They, they, if they have it, buy it there. But with the markers for $2 are here and the dies are here and the the my my sticky dots are here my sticky sheets are here and the simply botanical is here so this week it's kind of scrapbooking made simple but by all means if you already have bix and sharpies and you just want to play get the blender pin spend the two bucks heck spend spend six bucks and get three of them <laughs> so you have them and if you want a quality see the only problem with the bix and the sharpies is they're not a brush tip you're not going to get that when you lay the color down. But if you want to start collecting alcohol markers and you want them at a price that you can afford, these are the markers we're going to be carrying in the store. So it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I will see you guys all next week. And thank you so, so much for staying with me and your support and your love and your your camaraderie and your acceptance and your suggestions and just everything that makes us the the family that we are i will see you next week bye <laughs>